So if you're thinking of joining us holding a common good plant sale on the 11th of May, uh, that's fantastic. And I thought I'd make a little clip with some top tips if you're not used to holding plant sales or you uh, are thinking about, you've got some questions. Um, I'm going to try and answer as many as I can here. I was going to have a live session for Q&A, but my dad's not very well. So rather than schedule something and get you all to queue up and join in on a on a live session, which then suddenly I might have to jump in the car and drive to Cumbria, uh, I thought I'd make a clip about plant sales. And if you have questions about your plant sale, please do type them into the into the chat after the clip and I will make sure I answer every single one. So I appreciate a lot of, there are plenty of you out there all around the world planning on holding a small plant sale on the 11th of May or around the 11th of May in aid of your local horticultural or gardening charity. And between us, we're not being competitive. It's not about how much you raise. Between us, I'm just keeping an eye on my milk. Um, between us, the idea is that we all raise a little bit of money to put into our local charities and we'll make a little bit of difference. You know, with all the bad news going on in the world, it's the ripple effect of small local activities that can make such a huge difference. By the way, I've got this enormous... Netherton foundry pan. It looks as though it's about to hit me on the head. Anyway, I'm making my hot milk for my coffee. I'm a bit knackered. I didn't sleep very well last night. So I'm treating myself to a milky coffee and then I'm going to do some top tips for plant sales. Now, normally I have adverts and all sorts going on, but this plant sale process is all about raising money for charity. So it seems counterintuitive that I then have adverts going on through my clips about plant sales. So this is an ad free, bit of an ad free session. And I've got here my list. We had a meeting, our plant sale committee. Um, it's not a very big committee last night. I mean, at its outside, there are seven of us. But um, last night, there were just four of us. And we're just going through. So we are April the 9th. And I'm just going through with everybody to make sure we've got everything, all our ducks in a row, so to speak, all our plants in a row for our plant sale. And actually, one of the really good ideas that we had last night is because my dad's not very well. And so if I have to just drop and run up up to Cumbria, I will. Um, and so really worth making a little list of who's responsible for what and making sure that everybody's got a copy of that list. So, because um, I might not be here, I will be, but you know, in case. Uh, so I'm going to, that's one of my jobs for this morning is to go through the, the list of jobs. There it is. And just make a list for everybody that we can all share and make sure that everybody knows who's doing what. Uh, we've already got each other's contact details and we've got a WhatsApp group so we can talk to each other on the WhatsApp and that's really, really helpful. So I'm going to go through my list and share with you what I've got on my list and help. hopefully it'll help you think about things. PR. <laughs> I've, I've got Sarah Instagram. So my neighbour is Sarah Beanie, the uh, celebrated uh, property developing television personality. Um, and she's a very nice girl and lives in the village. And uh, so somebody suggested it would be a really good idea to get somebody who's got plenty of social media following to share that we've got a plant sale coming up in the village. So I must ask Sarah. But I will also share on my Instagram, um, Mamie, who runs the treatment bag, which is one of our charities we're raising money for. She will share on his her Instagram. So everybody will share on their social media that there's a plant sale coming up and that it's a bring and buy a plant sale, that the plants will all be two pounds each, that, you know, the timings, where, when, how, and, and all of that information. Um, and we also have another one of our committee, Claire. She is talking to another one of our committee, Helen, who's not made any of the meetings yet, but I know she's a very good, uh, a very good village lady. Um, she has a business called... Um, 
made by thimble on instagram she has a brilliant instagram made by thimble where she's not really trying to get loads of instagram followers but she's really interested in sharing with people what it's like small manufacturing businesses in the, in the countryside in the uk and they have um she has a small manufacturing business they sew um Anyway, she's brilliant, but she hasn't made it to any of the committee meetings, but is going to be in charge of the teas, coffees and cakes with Claire. But she's also very good at the Village Facebook. So Claire and Helen are going to refine a couple more posts to go on the Village Facebook uh, to remind people in the village that the plant sale's coming. And we've got notices going in the Village Parish magazine. The Village has a... Um, and uh, a mailing list so we'll make sure that it goes on the mailing list um, and as we get closer so we're the 9th of May so April so we're about a month to go before this great event so we're just drip feed to remind people encourage people ask people of their help all of that stuff social media is brilliant and nearly always your local your local town or village, if it, if nothing else, will have a Facebook page that you can share on. We're also going to do some physical leaflets, not very many, uh, just a few physical leaflets, which another one of our committee is going to deliver to places like the coffee shop in town and the, um, you know, the businesses around here, which, uh, you know, the farm shop, Kimber's farm shop up the road, number 16 in Wincanton, those places uh, so that people can see that the post office that the plant sale is happening so I've got to get those sorted out today um, I've got we need to put signs up on the side of the road and we've got really good blackboards village blackboards that Fabrizio made for the Queen's Jubilee party a couple of years ago and of course, they're brilliant. They, you know, you can use them again and again. So they are currently in Amber's attic. And so I'm going to ring Amber today and say, and Amber does lovely handwriting, chalk handwriting. So what we do in between events is repaint the blackboards black and then with a chalk pen, write plant sale 11th of May, 9.30 to 1 p.m., Charlton Musgrove Village Hall and we're going to have them at the entrances of the village if you like where the roads come into the village so that people see it and we're going to put them out a little more than a week before the plant sale so about 10 days before gives people time to take them in and notice that they're there notice the date notice the time and so on and I'm going to ask Amber if she wouldn't mind doing that because she does it so nicely um i got to order badges we've got lots of people helping and the people behind selling the plants are going to be wearing common farm flowers aprons because they've got good um pockets so that if people pay in cash we can just put the cash in our pockets and then we'll have a central reservation where we can uh decant the cash from time to time but we've also arranged, and thank you very, very much, Emily Showering, um, who has a big sale every Christmas up at the race course in aid of the Balsam Centre in Wincanton. So she is going to make it possible for us to use their sum up um, things so that people can pay with a card. And Mamie is going to be in charge of training everybody to make sure that they work on the day. We know that the village hall has really good Wi-Fi, so that will work. So we've got those sum up things. We've got Mamie's going to give us the training and then we, so we'll be able to take cash and card payments. Uh, one of the ways to encourage people to pay cash, uh, they don't have to pay cash, obviously, but uh, we don't sell our teas and coffees. We just have a bowl in the middle of the teas and coffees place and it says, please make a donation. In our long experience, people are much more generous if you say make a donation than if you charge £2.50 for a cup of tea and a biscuit. 
it's much, much easier. People just chuck a fiver in. They know it's all for charity, so people don't mind. Um, but I must get a float. So it's on my list is to get a float for this for the for the plant sale so that we've got some change. We don't need a huge amount of float money because people start buying with pound coins quite quickly. But I will get a hundred pounds worth of pound coins and some tens and fives. So that if people are paying with big denomination notes and they need change, we've got it. Quite quickly, that sort of balances out and we end up having lots of change. But just from the beginning, if you're doing signs, it is the law, certainly in the UK, you mustn't put signs on the edge of the road so they're too close to the road because obviously they're a visual impediment. So if you're doing road signs saying plant sale Saturday the 11th of May 9.30 a.m. for example, they need to be a metre away from the edge of the, high, of the road where the cars go. So do make sure that you don't break the law with your signage. Um, we decided we are going to have a book stall. Um, we don't have to have a, you know, this is a plant sale, but it's possible to kind of expand your offering, if you like. And everybody always has too many gardening books, recipe books, interior design books. And so a stall, a book stall we're going to have where people can, again, make a donation. It, it's not X amount per book. It's just, you know, pick up the book, decide how much you think it's worth and and make a donation. It's a great way to... Ha it's not, you know, we all have too many books, but l people love gardening books. So share and share alike. Um, but... So I've got to go on... I have contacted some people for my tombola prizes matty morton the um amazing ceramicist has offered a beautiful piece for our tombola it's not a tombola it's it's i think if you're in america you might call it a brand hub if you're in england you're going to call it a lucky dip and basically we're going to have a tin bin and it's going to be filled with the sort of um chippings that you might make bedding for a guinea pig with <laughs> that's what a brand tub is um and then we're not obviously we're not putting the prizes in the brand tub because they're too good so far matty has offered us a lovely piece of ceramics her her beautiful work i mean just amazing um we've got Niwaki, uh the tools people are giving us something to put in our um in our uh in our prizes, Rose and Lions, my lovely friend Nikki at the shop where I get my earrings. <laughs> and she now sells <laughs> Merry People boots. Anyway, she's giving us something. Um, and uh, various other people. Oh, lovely um, Rachel Pedder Smith, who make whose mugs. These are beautiful mugs that I always have. She's giving something. Anyway, and I've got a whole list of people I haven't... I've got seeds from Higgledy Garden. And there's a whole lot of people I haven't yet contacted, so I must do that. Um, so that we have really, really fantastic prizes. Because we're not going to wrap the prizes and put them in the Lucky Dip. Otherwise, you would just feel around until you found, felt something that was the sort of prize you would like. We're going to put hundreds of chuppa chup lollies into the Lucky Dip. So everybody will get a chuppa chup lolly. You feel around until you find a chuppa chup lolly. But some of those chuppa chup lollies will have a label attached to them and the label will match one of the prizes. So you have a great chance of winning and we hope we're going to raise lots of money. But because you pay a fee every time you use the sum up, we're going to make that uh, lucky dip cash only because otherwise it's the percentage on every two pounds or whatever it is, is too much. Um, but that's okay. We can put that on our Facebook post and all of that. If you're going to have a lot of plants for sale, it's really worth asking around for people who might have trays or sturdy boxes 
and we will put those under the tables where we've got the plants for sale so that if people are buying plants, they've got something to take them home in. Otherwise, sometimes it puts people off. If they've got nothing to carry them in, they think, well, no. Nah. So if you ask around, collect boxes uh, or even plant trays, you know, those trays with potholes in, that you can keep under the tables where your plant sale is happening, then people have got something to take their plants away with them. Very good idea. Uh, I'm going to get badges. We've got lots of people helping. Not everybody is going to be behind the plant sale table. We're going to have five or six of us actually selling the plants, but it gets quite crowded there. So some other people are going to be walking around and they're going to have badges saying, can I help? A big, enormous badges. So I've got to order those. But I think that's a really good idea if you've got... If you think you might have a few people coming, then have some extra help with can I help? Um, I must ask uh, Lucinda. That reminds me. Uh, so a neighbor, one of the neighbours, my neighbours in the village, has a collection of really great old village hall trestle tables from another village hall. And she keeps them uh, so that if they have family parties or whatever, they're very useful. Um, and we've always borrowed those tables for the plant sale because our village hall has plenty of tables, but not quite enough. So I must ask Lucinda if we can borrow those tables and if she will deliver them. Um, Higgledy Garden has very kindly sponsored. So this is an idea. The plant sales in May, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it's possible that you also, your community has a something like a flower and produce show later on in the season. So we do, in September, this Charlton Musgrove has a flower and produce show. So it's the ideal time to be handing out sunflower seeds so that the children can sow their sunflower seeds and have competitively tall sunflowers for the flower and produce show. So I must check with Higgledy, who has very kindly said that they will sponsor these seeds. Gemma was going to be uh, packeting them up. They're going to be sent over. And then I'm going to give them all to Amber who I'm also asking to do the painting of the signs. And Amber's going to be in charge of handing the seeds out because she knows who lives in the village. There's no point in handing free, super tall sunflower seeds out to people who live in Tisbury or Yarlington. Wrong village. <laughs> the Flower and Produce Show is for people in this village. So Amber's going to be in charge of doing that. Um, and the other, the last thing I'm going to do is uh Kerry my lovely friend neighbor Kerry and friend neighbor and friend who lives across the road has offered to help which is fantastic Kerry brilliant um but I must just also ask her if her husband would very kindly help with the parking we the village hall here has a long narrow strip of parking and sometimes especially people aren't used to it people park quite oddly so I'm I think it's a good idea to have a couple of um, stewards for the parking. So I'm going to ask Kerry if she'll ask her husband and another, uh, Sally's husband, uh, Sally is another committee member. Um, so those two, especially if they're both village hall committee members, so they will know that it's good if village hall committee members are in charge of the parking because then everything happens right. Um so that is the top of the list. Now, I'm just going to show you some of the plants I've got. We did a, a rough tip, um, tot up of plant numbers last night. And we, I think, we're well on the way to having uh, our 2,000-ish plants to sell. So what Anne is going to do, another committee member, is she's going to write signs on pieces of paper about this big and they're going to say annuals, herbs, tomatoes, general veg, whatever. And I've got to get the sticks so that they can be plugged. 
we'll arrange all of the plants the afternoon before on the Friday. And if we have signs, then people who come to the plant sale know what they're looking for, can make a beeline for tomato plants or runner beans or whatever it is that they're after. So it's good to have these. And she's going to write, hand write them really nicely with a fat pen and then laminate them. So that, we, and we'll, we used to have them and I don't know where they've gone uh, for, but we haven't had a plant sale since before the pandemic. So, you know, some things disappear, go the way of all things. But um, this is a really good way of showing people ki kind of splitting the plants up on the tables. And, um, right, come on, let's, let's go and have a look at what I've got for plants and see what else is there. So they're not all enormous, but we are still a month away. And what I've been doing is I wanted some artichokes for myself. So I grew too many and I've potted up three for the plant sale. And everything I've done, here's some Gadisha with, <laughs> with a random extra, a freebie extra uh, artichoke thrown in. I'll move that. Um, and in a month, you can see those are going to be quite tall. Here, I've been, I dug up, and you may remember my doing this a, 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 really quite a while ago. I dug up some perennial bellflower, campanula, and split it. So I've got several of those. Down here, I dug up a small clump of perennial phlox and split them. And they've taken really nicely. Here is the, this is, I'm always talking about this. This is the um, bog sage. And so they're, they're quite good value for two pounds a pot. And there are plenty of them. Not everything on here is so these are mine. These are mine. <laughs> but these are for the plant sale. And I know I can tell what's for the plant cell because they're in a round pot. Anything in a square pot's for me, anything in a round pot's for the plant cell. And then here are some more plant cell, plant cell people. They could do the water. Um, so just a lovely mix of plants which will be useful and people might enjoy, mostly taken from cuttings. And down here, I've got for example, chilies and peppers for me, but then and tomatoes for me, but then ooh, more for the plant cell. And cobia scandens for me and more for the plant cell. So you don't have to have masses. It's not, let's not be competitive about it. Let's do lots of small plant cells and raise individually small amounts of money for local gardening charities which do so much good for people with mental health issues you know young people with learning difficulties who learn to work at a, a horticultural charity people who desperately need to get outside and just get their hands in the earth but don't get that opportunity for whatever reason at home. There are gardening charities who are raising plants to plant community gardens, to plant gardens at hospitals where hospitals provide an outside space for patients to go and, and recover. Prisons need gardens and often have really fantastic horticultural programmes where people learn how to garden and then after they leave prison they have a new skill that they can apply to their working life primary schools secondary schools anyway wherever you don't it's not about doing masses it's not about competing with anybody it's about having a plant cell so that you do a tiny little bit of good you connect with your neighbourhood, you talk to your community, and together you make the world a little bit a better place. We honestly, there's, you know, the phrase we're going to hell in a handcart feels like it really does apply at the moment. And this way, doing a little good thing from time to time, 
like for example holding a small plant cell will make lots of little ripples of goodness so that there's a tsunami of good feeling as a result of this anyway i've got more on my website um under the youtube tab on my website there's the common good plant cell page and there's more information there if you're holding a plant cell please do send any information when where and in aid of which charity and if you've got one your instagram handle and if you email them to club at commonfarmflowers.com we are collating them and nearer the time we, we will share what we can on our instagram so that we can encourage people to go to a small plant cell near them i'm told that uh washington state <laughs> is very plant sale-y it's good anyway wherever you are in the world i hope you might feel inspired to join me and lots of other people holding small plant cells for your local gardening charity and let's see if we can make the world a better place even though we feel we might feel as if we can't do anything but we can we can all do a little thing and it'll make such a difference so thanks very much for watching and please put your questions in the blurb and i'm sorry i'm not going to do a live about this um but i think it's crazy to schedule something and then not do it uh so put your questions in and i promise i'll answer them okay <laughs>